2020 witnessed some amazing AI papers. The most happening area of computer vision, which is image generation, saw some mind-blowing high-definition images generated. While 3D reconstruction of deforming objects is pretty hard, the year saw some unsupervised approaches to the problem. While we are also getting closer to unsupervised learning by virtue of self-supervised and contrastive learning, we will definitely not get there without stepping stones like SimClear and Momentum Contrast. While unsupervised learning is growing fast, we are also still seeing papers on object detection. Let's jump straight in and see our best picks for 2020. This year, we had version 4 of the never-ending series of YOLO papers. YOLO 4 introduces a bunch of tricks to improve upon YOLO 3. Any neural network based on object detection pipeline can be broken down into your input, the backbone, the neck and the final head. The input is your input image. The backbone is usually a standard network like the ResNet or VGG that extracts the features and the neck is used to improve the discriminability of the network further such as FPN, PAN, etc. The head could be either a one stage such as RPN, YOLO, etc. or it can be two stage such, such as faster RCNN. YOLO 4 does thorough experiments and says that CSP Darknet 53 is the best network for backbone and for the neck, they use path aggregation network. And finally, for the head, they keep the YOLO version 3 itself. Additionally, they name the methods that don't add any computational overhead as bag of freebies. Some of them include data augmentation to the inputs such as cut mix, mosaic data augmentation, and self-adversarial training. Then they introduce something called bag of specials such as the mesh activations, cross-stage partial connections, etc. to improve the performance and squeeze the juice out of the network. Now with all these modifications, YOLO 4 at last achieves a 10% increase in average precision over YOLO 3 and a 12% increase in frames per second. As transformers become more and more mainstream for language processing tasks, transformers have slowly started showing promising results in computer vision as well. A very good example of this is the paper End-to-End -end Object Detection with Transformers from Facebook AI. DITER is a set-based object detector which has a convolutional backbone network to first extract the features of the input image. These features are then fed to a transformer encoder because transformers lose the positional information, we explicitly add positional information before passing to the encoder. In addition to getting the outputs of the encoder, the decoder also gets as input a fixed number of output position embeddings corresponding to n possible objects in the input. The output of decoder is passed through a fully connected neural network to predict the bounding boxes which results in fantastic results like this one. Nerf was a paper that synthesized novel views of 3D scenes with only a few images of the scene. Using these interpolated views, we can get a seamless transition as we move the camera. So how does it work? 
Given a 3D scene and a viewpoint, we have a ray of view along the scene. We sample several points X, Y, Z along this ray. As we march along the ray and for each X, Y, Z location on the ray and the view direction theta and phi, you get the corresponding RGB values along with the opacity at that point X, Y, Z. We use these one by one mappings to train a fully connected neural network F in a supervised fashion. With this trained network, you should be able to predict the RGB and radiance for a viewpoint and so generate novel views with the network. Now that was view synthesis with supervised training. If you ask me, unsupervised is the future and we do have a paper which won the best paper award in CVPR 2020. The idea is to exploit symmetry in the input image. Given an input image, it is passed through four networks to get the viewpoint, depth, lighting and albedo from each network. These components are combined and rendered together to form a reconstructed image. In order to restrict the network to understand the nature of the input better, we help the network learn that the input is symmetric at almost all times by not only passing the input image but also its horizontally flipped counterpart. We render the input image using the depth, albedo and lighting and use the reconstructed image to train the network. Lastly, to strengthen the output, we use another autoencoder and reconstruct the input. Now moving on to optical flow, RAFT was the paper that won the best paper award at ECCV conference 2020. RAFT calculates dense displacement field between each pixel in image 1 to each pixel in image 2. The first stage is feature extraction where we have a series of convolutional blocks. They also use an additional context network to extract contextual information from the first image. At the second stage, they compute visual similarities, which is nothing but a dot product which results in a 4D correlation tensor. The 4D correlation tensor is of dimension height by width by height by width, thereby capturing the similarities between each pixel in the first input image and each pixel in the second input image. The last stage is the update operator which uses the output of the correlation tensor and computes a field flow direction. It is somewhat like an optimization algorithm that decides the direction of the next step to be taken. PIFU HD is an extension of PIFU which stands for Pixel Aligned Implicit Functions. PIFU had a coarse encoder 
with downsampling operations. The main drawback of PiFu was that the reconstructed 3D occupancy volume was a low resolution of 128 by 128. This in turn led to limited details in the 3D output generated. To address this problem, PiFu HD introduced a shallow but wider network parallel to the coarse network of the PiFu and trains with high resolution of 1024 by 1024. While the coarse network captures the context, this shallow network captures the fine details thereby resulting in very high quality 3D reconstruction. Stalegan 2 released in 2020. Stalegan 2 addresses the problem of artifacts in the generated images present in Stalegan 1. Contrastive learning is catching up on us big time. A paper that proves that point is SimClear, which had a significant impact on us this year. To understand the SimClear architecture, let's take a simple classification problem. Let a batch be composed of two images of a dog and a cat and their augmentations. We first pass the images through a base encoder FFX and get their embeddings H these embeddings are then passed through a two-layer neural network GFX to get the embeddings Z. We then use a modified version of cross entropy called normalized temperature scaled cross entropy to compute a loss. The loss rewards the similarity between the dog images and penalizes the similarity between a cat and a dog image. The results produced by SimClear were clearly winners against other competing contrastive learning approaches. Another contrastive learning paper that had quite an impact this year was the Momentum Contrast or MoCo. To understand Momentum Contrast, let's first see how the contrastive loss can be implemented in three ways. Let's take the simple example of one query and one key. The first is when the query encoder and the key encoder are updated end-to-end -end with full backpropagation. This is very naive and does not scale that well. One way to scale it will be to use a memory bank or a dictionary of all the key representations or features. But the drawback is that the amount of memory that we have is always limited. The novelty of momentum contrast is the introduction of a momentum encoder to overcome this problem. Instead of storing everything in memory bank and running out of memory, it introduces a dictionary in the form of a queue, which maintains a memory of just the current training batch of inputs and flushes out the past batches. Obviously, the more consistent this dictionary is, the better the performance will be. So how does Momentum Encoder achieve this consistency? As you can see, the, the speciality of Momentum Encoder is that the parameters 
get updated with the momentum term, which slows down the learning process of the momentum encoder and keeps it consistent. As you can see, the results of MoCo beat most of the classification networks based on contrastive learning and could reach accuracies of almost 70%. As CNN generated images get harder and harder for humans to differentiate, researchers at UC Berkeley say that it is surprisingly easy to spot them. First, they trained a simple real or fake classifier using images generated from ProGAN. The trained real or fake classifier seems to do a pretty good job on the images generated by all these other GAN models. So they concluded that that could be a common systematic flaw restricting the GANs and hence convolutional neural networks to achieve realistic image synthesis. Let's wait and watch out for the space. That was our list of top 10 computer vision papers of 2020. Let me know in comments if you liked any other papers and please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Thank you very much.